Hey, this is Joe Price. I just wanted to provide some instructions on this project we're doing where we're going to be linking land patent records in Colorado to the family tree. This is part of a research project that we're doing, but it has some a really interesting application of how do you take a record that doesn't have a lot of information about someone and attach that to the family tree so that it can become a discovery experience. It'd be really neat to know maybe you, uh, if our grandparents or great-grandparents homesteaded, where the land was, how much they paid for it, other things like that. Those are kind of cool discovery experiences. So let me share my screen so you can see how this works. So here's the sheet. We're just focusing on one little town in Colorado for now. And so these are all the land patents. And right here, you can see we, we just have a patent year and we have a name. And if you go over here, there's some other fields, but um, you know, not really helpful. So, so we don't have any of our typical genealogy data about birth year, age, birthplace, family members, or other things. So let me show you how I approach this. Um, I find that actually um, it's much easier just to start in Ancestry. So I'll come here to Ancestry. I'm just going to search. I'm going to just search all collections for Henry L. Clark. And then I'm just going to put in Eaton, Old County. And then I don't know birth year, so I'm just going to leave that blank. Okay. Just here, I'm going to search. And right away here, I get a hit for this Henry L. Clark living in Weld County in 1880. Notice his patent year was 1885. Uh, that's a close match. And actually, if you click on these, you can see the, the patent we're talking about actually is on Ancestry as well. So uh, what I'm going to do here is now I found my Henry Clark. Uh, one thing I like to do is maybe see if he's part of a public member tree. Uh, let's, let's find other people. Um, let's see, he, he might be oh, from what I'm seeing there. So what I'm going to do is now that I at least have some birth info, I'm going to come over here on family search. I'm going to hit family tree person. And now that I'm on a person page, I'm going to hit recents and hit add unconnected person. I'm going to type in Henry L. Clark. Now, the reason I'm going to do this as an unconnected person is that it will do two things at once. It's gonna allow us to search for him because uh, when we go to add a new person, it will search. So we might get a possible match right away. And if not, then uh, we'll be able to add him to the tree and uh, build out from there. So you can see here that actually I have two different Gail Clarks born about the same time in Indiana, one in 52, one in 56. They have different parents. So I, I'm gonna have to remember that as we um, build out from there. So in this case, I am going to actually create a new person because I'm going to start to grow out Henry with his wife. And maybe that will allow us to get maybe a marriage record. And uh, that might cause us then later on to merge the duplicate. So here we go. Oops, sorry, I meant to hit family search. What we're hoping is that family search will find this 1880 record. And there it is right there. And actually, this is really, uh, let's see. No, this is a different one. We need one that's in Weld County, which is this one right here. This, we're going to attach the family tree. At, I'll add in Sarah. I'll just leave out her married name just for now, though it's fine to have a married name in there. And Donald Clark. Now let's see if we can find him maybe in another record. So let's take a look here in 1900. So then in Bland, Blaine, Idaho, also with Sarah, Sarah Clark. Uh, it looks like the birth years are lining up really well. And now we have a mother-in-law, which is great because that would allow us to get Sarah's last name. So let's come here. Let's just see if everything lines up with this 1900 record. So I'm just kind of scrolling down here, see if I can find it. Um, this is one of the things about family search, it's a little frustrating. It doesn't always kind of come, come up the way you expect it to. So let's just make sure, let's just tell it to go look in an exact place of residence. That's obviously why I like to start here on Ancestry. It kind of gives me a better chance of finding records that we're looking for. Okay, now I'm going to record. Let's take a look. So he's Indiana, she's Vermont. So that's a very unique match. And now we have a birth month as well. And that might allow us to start to narrow in who are. Who are. Now we have Asana Garfield, who is our mother in law. So now what I'm going to do is just kind of keep adding things until we finally, um, until this family connects into the bigger tree. 
uh, or we start to like at least find several census records for them. Okay. This for Sarah, we can come in here and have her birth info, which we can put in here from the 1900 census. Same thing for her husband. So here now we're picking up a marriage record, which is great. Yep, there we go. And you can see Sarah Garfield getting married shortly before there in Iowa. So you can think of them like, you know, coming Vermont crossed. Uh, pretty good. And, uh, you know, enough unique combinations where we have the exact initials matching up, the names matching up, a maiden name and a married name all matching up. So that's really great. And then here we can come here into the 1900 census and we'll grab this info. Because remember, we knew that we had two possible matches coming into this. And so if we can put in enough information, maybe one of those possible matches will, will show up. You can always search Ancestry again now that we've actually put in more stuff. So here we have that 1900 census. Um, let's see, there's the 1880 census. I was just seeing if we have maybe some other things. So let's click on this one here. Let's see, we have 1880, potentially 1860. Let's take a look here. We've got servants and borders living there. Okay. And then here we finally have some public member trees popping up. This one, I guess, is maybe so you can take a look here. Let's look at Sarah. Okay. So with Sarah, we actually can maybe branch her out. So maybe the connection will happen through Sarah's family. And then notice here now we finally have a possible duplicate showing up. And so here we go. You can see Ludlow. There's her parents, Alicia and Aseneth. And so we're going to copy the birth because notice here uh, in the possible duplicates, I, I have to keep one side or the other. I can't like pick and choose the fact that this has a more precise birth date. That one has a more precise place. So I'm going to copy the place. Let's bring this across. Birthplace right here. And then notice now we can merge the mother. This. And so we are done. Okay, so you know you can see these take a little bit of time, but that's um, that's what it takes when you have like a really hard matching problem to do. And and the data set's not that big, so I think we can actually do this by hand. And this will help us start to think about you know how would we teach a machine to. This thing here, I'm just going to take this off. So then the last step we need to do is just go back to was the wife here, just copy the ID and then just drop that. It looks like we're gonna drop the whole URL in. So this page, here is his URL, we'll this here, and notice he's showing up in three patents. Go to the next one. But the same process, just, I think it's easiest if search on ancestry, try to find some records that line up with Weld County or something that would be consistent with the land patent records that we're working on. These are all Eaton, Colorado, which is in Weld. Uh, once you have uh, a record that has maybe some birth info in it, put that person on the tree. Many of the times that you go to put them on the tree, you'll see a possible match. Once you have that possible match, then um, that sometimes you'll be done right away. If not, then you'll need to branch out from the family that you started with and try to go until you connect up to the tree. So um, thanks for helping with this project. We're really excited to find new ways to link uh, these kind of records that don't have a lot of information about the person but locate them in a specific place. And by using that place, um, we can link uh, these really hard to link records. So thanks for helping with this.